that Saudi is doing their um, the other way that everyone else is doing it. So they're not trying to buy technologies. They're not trying to use existing solutions. They're trying to create a base in Saudi, in the kingdom, to invent, to innovate, to develop. Hello and welcome to the May Man Show. As usual, we are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And today we have with us the GCC General Manager for Control to Go, Irina Idrisova. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Hussam. Thank you for having me today. Uh, It's my pleasure. And I hope I got your last name right the second time around. Yes. Okay. And uh, so, uh, Elena, can can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what you do uh, and what work you're doing here in Saudi uh, with Control2Go? Um, um, My role in uh, Control2Go is um, to be a digital transformation leader in emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And I'm covering GCC region as I was assigned to develop and to well, manage these projects that are happening in this region. Okay. So my main, um, the company that I'm working for, it's uh, the leading AI company. Mm-hmm. And um, the solutions that we implement is uh, around creating eff- effectiveness in the operations in the industrial sector. Right. to ensure safety and operational excellence of the heavy intensive enterprises mm-hmm. like energy, like oil and gas, like mining. Mm-hmm. So uh, we create solutions in order to uh, drive this transformation. And um, I was always uh, believing and was always focused on this market because I believe that the GCC region is the most skyrocketing in implementing dif- different uh, technology solutions. Okay. That's why uh, it was my initiative to bring the company to this region. And uh, that's why I'm here for the last uh, three years. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're doing a successful job and uh, delivering uh, great results to the industry because our main uh, focus and the main uh, sector that we are covering is industrial sector. All right. And um, digital transformation is is a huge part of Vision 2030. So since you've been here... um, how 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 would you uh, basically uh, describe what is being done when it comes to digital transformation, artificial intelligence, you know, and and Saudi in various sectors? You know, um, uh, Saudi consider, and we all believe that uh, Saudi is uh, artificial intelligence driven economy. Okay, and uh, they put a lot of uh, focus and uh, um, attention to bringing uh, the AI, the AI's technology to the center of the development. Okay. And uh, speaking about the results, we see different transformation happening uh, in terms of technology implementation, in terms of pioneering implementation and uh, introduction and use cases in different sectors from energy to environmental. And uh, the organizations like Sadaya, like uh, MSAT, mm-hmm. like uni- research universities like KAUST, they are doing a great job in terms of creating the vision and realizing this vision and being the first pioneering uh, entities uh, to create art of AI, you know. Okay. So how to enable this, how to really create uh, benefits in terms of economy in the market. Mm-hmm. And um, speaking about the latest uh, Global AI Summit, just was uh, recently kicked off in Riyadh in this September. Okay. I really believe that uh, this is great investment Mm -hmm. from the government to um, create this type of like platform to connect uh, investors, uh, global leaders in uh, AI sector, to uh, to connect innovators, founders from all over the world. Because I really believe that uh, you need a very healthy, and mm-hmm. a very dynamic ecosystem in order to create this attention and create this environment. So I think that it's a very, a very straightforward and very long-term vision that is happening right now. And um, as for results, we see several projects that already been kicked off uh, several years ago in, in Saudi in terms of safety, in terms of data security, in terms of environmental uh, protection. And because um, also, as we know, that um, 
industrial impact on the environment is huge and AI can play a significant role in order to create their stable um, production. Okay. And that is not impacting environments at the level that it can create different, you know, challenges. Mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, the work has been doing great and uh, it has a lot of potential and we see it happening just in yeah. front of us. All right. And <clears throat> aside from, you know, uh, you know, going back to the Global AI Summit and aside from connecting thought, le you know, thought leaders, decision makers, entrepreneurs and specialists in the field, uh, the summit was, all, you know, also playing a thought leadership role. I remember uh, when I was attending the summit. Uh, which was basically, you know, how can artificial intelligence be used for the betterment of, of humanity? So what do you think, uh, you know, you know, as someone who's in the field, you know, what are your thoughts about, you know, Saudi Arabia taking a, being in the forefront of, of carrying this dialogue on a world level? Um, this is a really great subject. Uh, first of all, I, th I have to mention that Saudi is doing their... Um, the other way that everyone else is doing it. So they're not trying to buy technologies. They're not trying to use existing solutions. They're okay. trying to create a base in Saudi, in the kingdom, to invent, to innovate, to develop. This is, I think, the core basis for all that is happening in any sector, in any organization that is working on. The, the main goal is to create the basis mm -hmm. so people can innovate. Okay. People can do pilots, people can test, people can uh, implement, people can get use of this technology because the core of AI is to create the impact for human, for okay. people. And we can, I believe that AI can do a lot of things in terms of improving their, uh, the life we live in, the communities, the way uh, we get services, the way we uh, pay for the services the way we get uh, healthcare and the uh, education um, from their authorities, from uh, from different organizations. So I think that the core that this government, uh, government is doing is that creating all infrastructure in a very, very fast and very great job mm -hmm. to build this, to build this on the ground. Okay. And the organizations and uh, private sector, they are, all will benefit from it. So I think that the main agenda in the, during Global AI Summit was also about it, and all the global leaders and Saudi leaders were speaking about this. That is uh, pioneering the new environment, the okay. new ecosystem. And such initiatives, for example, as AI Corridor, that was launched by Saudi Aramco, is also something that never happened before to create uh, the ecosystem of startups that can be launched from Saudi and can uh, then can expose and can um, uh, go to different regions by, by being um, reflected, by being set up okay. and uh, using this technology from Saudi to their global uh, arena. So this is something that differentiates uh, the kingdom. Okay. And, uh, you know, in, in, in your experience uh, working here, um, what uh, industries do you see, you know, uh, basically digital transformation, artificial intelligence excelling? And also what uh, sectors do you see there as like an untapped potential in the usage of, of digital, you know, solutions and artificial intelligence? So uh, as I work in industrial sector, <coughs> as a, as a, in the position of the country manager for the company, mm -hmm. I believe that AI still um, very low implementation in the industrial sector. Okay. Uh, and uh, there are several reasons for this. Uh, mostly it's connected to the safety and security of the data. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this, uh, this type of uh, challenges are being addressed and are being like in the, in the stage of uh, solving and because it will help to implement more and more innovative solutions mm -hmm. in order to um, implement AI from uh, from downstream to upstream okay. in their oil production. So, but we see already big use cases like uh, that happening in the gas and oil fields uh, across the kingdom. Right. Uh, so if we speak about other sectors like healthcare, mm -hmm. like uh, environmental uh, sector, I think there are more use cases now right. by being piloting, uh, by being implemented on different um, I mean, organizations, okay. because it helps, um, it, it has less data, I mean, uh, 
security in terms of, I mean, in terms of um, um, sector level. Okay. Uh, but in terms of uh, implementation, I think that environmental, healthcare, retail, and um, uh, education is also like on the growth. All right. Um, speaking about, uh, for example, payments methods. Okay. Uh, Saudi has uh, has a very great results in terms of getting to a fully cashless society. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's due to different technologies that by implemented by Saudi Payments Organization and we see also significant results in this. Okay. So also I believe um, understanding your customers is uh, also quite attractive and being used by several uh, uh, SMEs uh, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because it helps to create more uh, addressed uh, products, understand what really the market needs and how to create really uh, niches that will be addressed by their society. Okay. And uh, so you moved here three years ago, right? Yes. During, during the pandemic. Yes. Okay. And uh, what made you want to move to Saudi? Uh, I remember, you know, uh, when I spoke to you uh, a couple of days ago, you were telling me a very interesting story of how it came to be. Uh, maybe you can tell us the story. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's all happened that I had a, a great opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to lead the team of, um, of data scientists, okay. of uh, engineers to a new market. And uh, I, we did our research uh, on different markets from starting from Asia to South America. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw a great potential in the kingdom due to the strategy that they launched, due to digital transformation opportunities that have been addressed by their global leaders here, okay. uh, by readiness of the markets for international uh, companies to to be- To uh, enter the to, market. To enter the markets and uh, by uh, the ways and easiness to be here, I mean, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I mean, uh, by uh, by seeing their uh, economy growth. Okay. This is also very important uh, because uh, it will be easier to uh, to be heard, okay. I mean, in front of their uh, leaders here because they will speak, we will speak the, the same language. All right. and this is very important. Uh, of course, I mean, I cannot say that of course, in our work, we all have this educational aspect. Okay. We educate every day. We educate why, how, and what is the purpose. Yeah, you always have to learn something new every day, right? <laughs> yes, but here we it's uh, much easier uh, because people are ready. Okay. So, uh, so I had that, uh, this amazing opportunity. So I I moved uh, to the kingdom and. Uh, uh, it's happened from the scratch. I mean, there was nothing that someone so, told me to. So to you do. took you took the day. Was it all based on the data research, or you know, you had a instinct that it would. Uh, data you know, research, and uh, I also was. Um, I had the only uh, institution that was supporting me at that time was MISA, mm -hmm. and this uh, Ministry of Investment. Okay, that's very and, interesting. And uh, I met them, not in Saudi, I met them at one of the global events happening uh, in Portugal. It okay. was um, a web summit, and uh, uh, they encouraged me, and they shared a lot of great statistics, numbers, that uh, what's happening. They were very the forthcoming, you know, very encouraging. Yes, and you know, uh, I step. really learned a lot from them. Okay. That's why it was a part of my research that I proposed to the company owners. Okay. And uh, yes, well, when I when I came here, uh, no one was no one was uh, waiting for me, you know. Okay. So no really? one told me how to do, whom to speak, All right. what is their culture about. So I all started from my, from the scratch, from learning myself. Okay. And um, yeah, I think it was a great journey. It's like not three years, you know, it's like nine years. Or so. Nine years already? <laughs> but wait, wait, okay, so you, you took all this research and, and statistics and data and you made a business case to, you know, your, your superiors at control to go, what were your, what was their feedback? Like, you want to move to Saudi? You want us to like, you know, were they hesitant? Were they, you know, uh, embracing of, of the idea? Did they think you were just, you know, uh, out of your mind? Or, you know, what did they, what, what did they say? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it was not as um, uh, ready to be approved mm -hmm. at that time. Yes, I, I had to put some effort in order to uh, create this, um, the to put this my vision from my head to their heads, you okay. know, to be very specific and transparent in my okay. thoughts. 
But yes, I uh, not so. It was not uh, as. Uh, Did they have like a good clear, understanding uh, of 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 like what Saudi Arabia was, or maybe you know because like you know like uh, media around the world doesn't project Saudi as 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 what you you've seen or you know no, experience. No, it was not. Uh, they didn't uh, like was concerned about something specific, uh, mm -hmm. mostly because of my that I'm female leader. Okay, and uh, that the woman in Saudi would be difficult to to pitch the idea to sell products, especially in AI, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so they assumed you wouldn't be taken seriously. Yeah, so, you know, it's like, okay, if she's so, like, uh, stubborn, and, uh, let, let's give her a chance. So it was like this, you know? Uh, yeah, and, and, and what was the first project that you were like, here, look, project, potential, Saudi? <laughs> yeah, so the first project that we had was with one of their... Uh, leading companies here yeah and uh, it was in uh, ai for their efficiency and safety okay and uh, i think that uh, by having this on the ground it opened up uh, the mindset mm -hmm. that the market is really here and by uh, having the right you know uh, business plan vision and uh, all the numbers that we project from the market and our strategy how to be a local player, who are our partners, how we will localize our solution, why it is important to localize. You know, what was happening here, what's the vision 2030 is, I was just transferring to the mind of my company. Okay. Because it's not, uh, the market is... Uh, y they it's a greenfield. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't know much about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I need to also to educate my company yeah. what is happening here and what is the vision is about, how we can, why how we should be in order mm -hmm. to be part of this vision, okay, you know how we need to uh, address these uh, opportunities. So I think, uh, yeah, it was um, it's a really exciting journey, and okay. um, as I told, uh, so much happening during these years. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's hard really to keep up, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, and then you know, you you moved to Saudi. Uh, you did everything by yourself. You had no one to receive you from the airport. You, you learned everything <laughs> by yourself as you go. Um, and you've managed to have uh, a social life here. So what do you do for fun? And uh, basically, what was your experience interacting with, with locals, people from Saudi? Um, you know, I'm a very sport-oriented person. Okay. So I like to do sports a lot. I do tennis. I play tennis. Mm -hmm. I do horse riding. Okay. I play golf. And do I, your superiors, um, you know, back at home run, they're like, you're able to do all this stuff in Saudi? <laughs> Yes, my 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 community in uh, in Russia, they was always following me on social yeah. media, saying that. So you're educating them. Uh, Elena, do you have a bodyguard? <laughs> Elena, yeah. how you do this old stuff? Yeah. Uh, so of course, I actually I open up a lot of things uh, here. So mm -hmm. my friends already visited Saudi a couple of times, and I'm really glad that I create this impact. You know, yeah. In for for them for. Uh, uh, to travel here, maybe to do business here, to encourage them to visit, you know. So speaking about my social life, also, I like to go out. I mm -hmm. visit different uh, events. Uh, there are a lot of happening, especially during the Riyadh season. All right. Martial arts, uh, uh, it's endless, endless it's events. Too much stuff going on, right? And you can choose anything from your... Uh, preference it can be a concert of one of the greatest saudi singers or yeah. nice uh, global uh, restaurants or just visit their uh, different shows you know yeah, so world's it, biggest artificial lake yeah, yeah uh, there is winter a, wonderland there is no pr problem you can yeah. go and choose whatever you like okay nowadays also and uh, uh, to mention about uh, local people mm -hmm. i uh, i'm really blessed to say this, but uh, I have my even Saudi family, like okay. people that uh, uh, greet me as a daughter here. Right. And I'm really, I'm re it's never happened to me in uh, in, in other um, societies, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm really blessed to have this. And uh, I have amazing friends, right. uh, amazing uh, people who are really uh, experts, business leaders, founders of different startups. Mm -hmm. So people who are very motivated, who are very excited about uh, all the vision, 2030, and they're trying to keep up with their results, with mm -hmm. uh, their uh, own careers. Yeah, it keeps me so... busy, Vision 2030. You know, <laughs> I have a studio because of it. So, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think we have a lot of interests in common mm -hmm. interests. And I think that um, 
you know, the nations are uh, very uh, have the same interests, the same visions, the same. Uh, uh, I would never thought about this, but it's it's really true. So I can easily find the same language. And, All right. Uh, to so let's 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 go back to because you were saying you have like you're blessed to have a Saudi family, and everyone calls you their you know their daughter. Or who g- give us like an example of of the first family that has adopted you. In, in Saudi, what? Like, how, how did that? It's the only one. Yeah, the only one. Yeah. I thought you said many adopted no, no, you. No, no, no. Okay, so the only one. All right. So, like, how did they adopt you? Like, what was, like, uh, did they invite? Like, how did you meet them, basically? Um, and what did did they invite you to dinner at their house? You know, like, can you give us a little more details on how you were adopted? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's happened just uh, during. Uh, meetings from one person to another you know it's like endless network mm-hmm. so uh, once it's uh, it's happened just uh, during one of the dinners and uh, and after it's not just happened you know exactly mm-hmm. at the one the first site you know? yeah. but it's because we are keeping in touch we were uh, i met the family children and uh, it was really great to to have this common common language you know yeah uh and uh it's really feels very homey uh, did you because... make you try saudi food of course yeah mandi That's... and uh this is my favorite one <laughs> mandi is your favorite yes okay. i really like meat and the meat in saudi is amazing you know it's right. uh... okay so you're a carnivore you're you know right? i have friends okay that are vegetarians <laughs> so oh. when they came to riyadh uh-huh. uh we went to one of the Saudi restaurants. It's called Suhail. It's okay. uh, it's amazing Saudi restaurant in Riyadh and yeah. um, fine dining experience. Uh, yes, and yeah. from food with, from different regions. Yeah, I've tried it. It's very nice. I like the idea. So, but the meat there, mm-hmm. people decided to try this meat, you know, because how come we are in Riyadh uh, and uh, even vegetarians, you know, said, okay, this is something that uh, purely uh, like. Flawless, you know. <laughs> okay, like they couldn't. They, the vegetarians yes, the tried the meat. Yes, you know. So really? this is confirms that. Uh, yeah, I all mean, lines, there's uh, vegetarian dishes too, but you know, if, if you got them to try meat, so that's <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, <laughs> big ups to you. <laughs> yes. um, all right. So, <clears throat> how has living here, basically uh, in Saudi, um, I wouldn't say affected you, but like, what did you notice about the culture? And the people and everyday life here that is unique, that is just Saudi Arabia and not mm-hmm. anywhere else you've been to around the world? Uh, first of all, I should say that the nation is very welcoming. Mm-hmm. It's um, like very heartwarming. People are, are always ready to help. And this is a really great point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one is uh, resembles with me is their very proactive person. Okay. I like to see a lot of young generation that are the same, mm-hmm. you know, that are like have a vision, have goals, have a strategy in life that they want, they know what they want mm-hmm. and uh, they have uh, like a very straightforward um, vision in, in their community. Okay. You know, because it all comes from the community. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, the people how they work with each other, how they interact with each other, it really motivates me. Right. I mean, I like to be uh, inside this community. How does it motivate you? Like you have to give us like the 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 core of what motivates you. Uh, first of all, um, this common feeling mm-hmm. that everyone puts their history and step in the transformation of the kingdom. Okay. This is something that motivates us all, mm-hmm. but this feeling that you personally can do and be a really uh, I mean, successful and mm-hmm. have a great use cases, uh, uh, success story, you can really uh, bring the value okay. to, the, to this economy, to the society, to the, uh, to the country itself. Mm-hmm. This is really what I think wakes me up in the morning. And okay. I want to do it. I want to do it in more scale. I want to uh, show up the world what is happening here. I want to attract more attention. I want to attract more uh, leaders, uh, experts to the kingdom mm-hmm. to add their blueprint, their, their you know, history here. Yeah. So this is um, 
motivates me personally okay. to be I'm, part of it. I mean, to me, it's like uh, what I, you know, when I use it as an, uh, or if I had to use an example, it'd be more of, um, if you've seen a Kevin Costner movie called Field of Dreams. Nope. Okay, well, and is just, you know, to, without giving you the whole synopsis of the movie, well, actually, it is a synopsis of the movie where the, this guy hears uh, voices where, uh, you know, and, and through the whole movie, they keep telling him, if you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. So he ends up building a baseball field in the backyard of his house. And then after the baseball field is built, there's crowds, there's people watching, there's spectators. So like through the whole movie, it was they're telling him, if you build it, they, were, they will come. So like Vision 2030 is it's kind of like the same thing. you know. It's like we're going to develop the country. Uh, and when it's developed... Everybody, you know, while it's developing, actually, <laughs> everybody's it uh, come, yes. yeah, everybody's coming. You know, I've I I, I, I seem to notice that there is actually uh, seem to know it's not just seem to notice. I've I've seen since, especially since tourism has mm-hmm. has opened, there is an influx of international uh, travelers coming mm-hmm. into Saudi, uh, and people like you have moved to Saudi <laughs> during yes, the pandemic. Yes. So, um, you know, d- during this time, are, are you familiar with Arab news before I called you or, you know, before you even moved to Saudi? Yes, I was a fellow you know, a fellow audience that was uh, reading yeah. the last maybe four or five years, definitely. Okay, and uh, what do you like about Arab news as, as a newspaper? Um, <clears throat> first of all, I think uh, speaking about... Um, Community, young community. Mm-hmm. I like the way their uh, Arab news are highlighting their uh, very personal development in the career okay. of their uh, different founders and business leaders of mm-hmm. the young age. Okay. I mean, by putting them on the front page, mm-hmm. by motivating them to grow, All right. uh, to uh, uh, sharing their stories. This mm-hmm. is, um, I mean, this is amazing, amazing job because we see it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think for all uh, founders, it's a, it's a great success if they're going on the front page of Arab News, you know, with their projects or with their startups. All right. So first of all, yes, this is amazing. I mean, in terms of uh, providing their highlights on this. The second one, I think that the way uh, very, very straightforward and in details, mm-hmm. uh, Arab News is covering uh, very important topics. All right. The way uh, they do it, okay. in di- not in just one way, in several ways, mm-hmm. by having podcasts, but ha- by having just uh, uh, regular uh, um, they have videos, newsletter, they videos, have news, uh, news online. Yeah, so it's like different news. ways to provide uh, uh, information to their audience. Yeah. This is uh, also like... And are you familiar with this podcast before you, uh, you know, have been a guest. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Actually, several of uh, the guests of this show mm-hmm. I met uh, recently during the last several months. Yes, and they were so, all and... bad mouthing me. They were saying, "Do not, <laughs> do not come on his show ever." Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Of course, no. <laughs> but it's really impressive that what you're doing. Okay, it's, um, uh, it's, it's a great job. I just try to tell a story and and talk to someone for for a half an hour or 27 minutes, and then we call it a day. <laughs> All right, before we wrap up, do you have any message um, for our Arab news audience? Um, you know, I think that the most important thing is that you should not be afraid of your dreams. Okay. Uh, maybe it some, sounds very simple, mm-hmm. but um, if you be uh, very focused, Mm-hmm. If you will know what you want in this life, in the short term and in long term, I think this is uh, what I will su- uh, highly suggest uh, people of uh, different ages okay. to have a have a goal. Okay. To have a goal in a personal life, to have a goal in career, mm-hmm. in uh, maybe hobbies, or uh, because when you have something specific and you visualize it, you have a very detailed vision how you want it where you want it when you want it with whom you want it right this will comes to you this will come to you so this is uh what i'm trying to do also this Mm -hmm. is a part of my like daily stuff okay (laughs) so and i think that this is important and uh, especially uh during uh 
these um, digital times mm-hmm. and have a lot of distractions right. uh, from whatever, it's very important to stay focused. All right. Well, that's uh, very well said. And I'd like to thank you very much uh, for being with us. And before we wrap up, to compliment uh, your message to the audience, uh, I think that if you don't dream big, you're not dreaming properly at all. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And that's all the time we have for this episode. Stay tuned for our next episode on Arab News. Mm-hmm.